All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is HD StarCraft, and I'm here to bring you guys Game 2 from Zotac Cup 152 between Liquid TLO and Derailed Phalo. I actually did take the time to go ahead and look up this player just to let you guys know a little bit of information about him. The team name is not Doctor, it is Derailed, and Phalo is actually a Danish player who plays Dota 2 as well as StarCraft 2. Actually uh, has more of an emphasis in Dota 2 than he does in StarCraft 2. By God, I love Dota 2, by the way, guys. Dota is awesome. Um, and I'll come out and say it, I actually like Dota 2 better than League of Legends. Sorry, guys, for all of you who like League of, League of Legends. I just like Dota 2 more. Maybe it's just because of my lack of experience playing League, but um, I digress. He uh, is a uh, semi-pro at StarCraft 2, uh, but more of a player who plays Dota 2. Anyways, this should be a good one. Game 2, it is going to be on Cloud Kingdom. And the little one has already shown that he is still the little one. Still creative as always. Uh, last game, <laughs> going for the... <laughs> it's like a proxy Nidus with Swarm Hosts. And, uh, you know, was able to break down the front door with that strategy. On You know, on this map, I think it could work out even better. Because on this map, you've got the same... You've got another location that you can basically situate a Nidus Swarm at. You can send the Swarm Hosts over to the front door. I mean, it's, it's almost like picture built for a Nidus attack for uh, with, with Swarm Hosts. The only thing I, I think this time that phalo has got to consider going for... And this is the way I think most Terrans can counter uh, Swarmos is Siege Tanks. Uh, either Siege Tanks or Banshees. Uh, one or the other. Banshees are pretty good because they're air and you can get in there and you can take out the swarm hosts. Uh, but siege tanks work just as well uh, because they, you know, they got an enormous range. They do a ton of AOE damage and they can keep the locusts at bay. So you know, either or I think would work. Um, but that's you know that's considering if the little one actually goes for the same strategy again, which. You know, probably won't, probably won't. Usually players like to switch it up and they like to mix things around. Uh, we do have a hatchery coming at the natural. We have a spawning pool coming right here inside the main base. And Phalo is actually going for a very quick expansion out at the front door. This time uh, going for the expo, you know, first. Actually going for CC first and now is double gassing the back here. Uh, so he's obviously going to try to get some tech going after this expansion is situated. Um, this is a pretty greedy opening from Phalo. But as long as you can get a couple of bunkers down, I think he'll be all right. And on a map like Cloud Kingdom, it's pretty hard for Zerg to break down the front door. Uh, you can bunker up, you can wall up this, this area right here very easily. Alternatively, you can just wall from here to here, uh, which is a more narrow passageway. And uh, I, I think Phala will be all right. I think his greed here is going to work pretty well for him. Uh, and as the Overlord flies in, it realizes, hey, the barracks is done, so I'm going to have to get my my floating blimp butt over to the to the rocks here uh, and observe carefully from over here so the little one now is trying to get that overlord back home but one marine is out i think it'll be all right though um i think that overlord will make it away pretty easily and back over at the natural expansion the little one is continuing to mine uh he's also got another queen coming out of the of the expansion you know all things going good right here for both players it's a full-on macro game a macro opening i should say and, uh, you know, I'm very curious to see what the Little One's composition here is going to be in the in the mid to late game. Uh, because obviously we're, we're probably not going to see anything crazy right away, uh, given their openings. Uh, so I'm very interested to see, is he going to go for maybe a Roach Hydra strategy? Uh, that's what, uh, that's what um, a lot of Zerg players are utilizing now. It's very, very good. Um, will he stick to more standard, um, you know, Brute Lord and Fester, which is still obviously very strong. Um, and, uh, you know, we can also see Muta Baneling as well. There's actually, those are the three compositions that Zerg can go with. Obviously, Ultras mix into several of those comps in the late game very easily, too. Uh, but those are the three kind of uh, mid-game strategies that you'll see a lot of Zerg players employ now in, in Heart of the Storm. And look at this, Phalo's going to go for a pretty quick armory here, uh, which can only mean he's going to go for mech this game. Uh, you know, th there's no other reason to go for this quick of an armory. And uh, he's actually going for a starport. I wonder if he's going to try to make a quick Thor here and ship the Thor. Uh, that would be really cool to see. Now, obviously, he's not researching stim or combat shields or anything like that. So that further tells me that, no, actually, he's going to go for stim now. Interesting. Um, so I guess he's going to go for a biomech mixture. And uh, not too sure why he went for such a quick armory. Maybe, I, I, I'm not sure. We'll see. Uh, I'm guessing it's for a quick Thor, but it could be for quick upgrades as well. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. 
Uh, meanwhile, back at home, the little one preparing his defenses with a couple of buildings here, just being safe against those potential Hellions. And the Hellions here are actually on the map. Um, remember, guys, you cannot transform into Hellbats until Transformation Service is researched. Very nice play right there from Phalo. He targets the Queen, realizing that the Spore Crawler or the uh, Creep Tumor had uh, went underground. And by that way, was able to splash the Creep Tumor down. So very, very smart play. And meanwhile, back at home here, it looks like Phalo. I don't know why he went for the. <laughs> I don't know why he went for the quick armory. To be honest with you guys, because he's not really utilizing it as far as I can see. He's actually transitioned right back into standard bio, and um, this was this was a strategy he was trying to go for in game one. Unfortunately, he was never able to realize it because of the Nidus attacks by the little one. But this time, I think I think we're gonna see a nice drawn out game here, which will showcase uh, both of these players' skills. You know, the German, the, the little one, and the Danish. Um, Phalo. So we'll see. One Overlord is going to try to float in here and it will get the scout it needs to get. The double engineering bay, the double racks is here in the middle. That's all the, the Zerg needs to see uh, to be able to conclude that, you know, the Terran is in fact going for a bio strategy. And from there, uh, the little one can go ahead and build a Baneling Nest, and that's exactly what he's going for. He's got a Baneling Nest coming up right now, and as you guys all know, Banelings are very effective against Marines. Uh, here comes a, a Medivac, though, and it's loaded up with two Hellbats, uh, and the Hellbats are going to drop right in here. Now, remember, you, the Terran still doesn't have Transformation Service, but he can still make Hellbats. He just can't transform back and forth. So these Hellbats are basically stuck in slow mode, but with the Medivac here, they can easily retreat, and these Zerglings are going to try to get the surround off of the Queens, or might be able to get them. Oh! The medevac goes down. A lot of the Zerglings were burned up as well, but they did not die. Just barely able to survive the attacks from the Flamethrower Blast. And the, the double Hellbat medevac goes down, which, you know, at this early stage in the game, it, it matters. You know, every little bit, especially in the early game, matters. So that's a that's a big loss right there from Phalo. He wasn't able to get any damage done. I don't even know why he stuck around, honestly. Usually, these medevac attacks are only effective when you get the surprise, the jump on the Zerg. When the Zerg knows you're there, you you gotta expect reinforcements to come. You know, you gotta expect that that is not gonna be able to get any damage. I don't know why he stuck around. I think he was trying to roast up the Zerglings. But unfortunately, it didn't work for him. Now, he's gonna try to go one more time here. And he is gonna get one drone, but that Spore Crawler pushes the Medivac away. And now these Hellbats, I don't know if they're gonna... I mean, they're gonna prevent mining time for a little bit. And they're actually gonna go for the Spore Crawler. And if the Spore Crawler goes down, this Medivac will be able to go at will inside the natural expansion. But as you guys can see, the Queen's trying to get in position as well, and that Medivac goes down, and the Hellbats are screwed once again. Although this time they will be able to get a little bit of uh, kills off. They're trying to roast up a few Zerglings here or there. Um, but actually, the little one with really good micro keeps most of his Zerg forces alive. Now, he's going to have to try to save his hatchery here. Phalo going for another attack at this morphing hatchery. This time the Zerglings do get the surround. And these forces are all but screwed. Phalo is going to lose everything, but he does bring the Hellbat to the back and trying to maximize expected value there uh, from, from the Hellbat. Now let's look at the units lost. Very, very close. Um, you guys can see right here, 1475 resources lost for Phalo and 1275 lost for Liquid TLO. Raiden here saying also three best of five. Not too sure what that means. As far as I'm concerned, I do believe this is a best of three. Um, so there it is. But anyways, we do have a armory back researching plus one uh, ship weapon. So uh, obviously the ship and vehicle share. I'm sorry, guys. They do share for Terran nowadays for both ground and air, allowing them to switch obviously very easily between if they want to go for ground mech or if they want to go into Sky Terran mode. But I don't think we're going to see Sky Terran anytime soon. It's still way too early in the game. 12 minutes in right now. Um, I do like what Phalo is doing here. He's coming out with an army Marine Hellbat Widowbind. He needs to think about securing the third first before he moves out though. I think this is a little bit too aggressive because right now the little one is on four bases. And, and honestly, I don't know why Phalo hasn't, you know, cleared out the Zerglings here and gone for the Expo first. This is kind of interesting. Uh, pretty aggressive move right here from Phalo, but I, I not, I'm not too sure if this can be successful. Now, he does have a lot of Hellbats and Widowbinds. A ton of splash damage for the Zerglings on the field. And just Zergling Baneling really seems to be the composition from the little one. Um, will it be enough to stop the Widow Mines as they plant down and the Marines and Hellbats here? I don't know. I don't think so. The, the, do remember the Banelings don't have hooks yet, so they can't move quickly. Oh my god, and they all detonate on really nothing at all. And phala has got to be happy about that. Now he can just micro away from the army. And the Widow Mines continuing to detonate on the Banelings. 
uh, Phalo here has got to be really happy about this attack, but I don't know if he should stay around. He's on the creep, he's overextended, and man, that's, that's the cost of war right there. Um, you know, your troops get uh, more and more tired, uh, more stim is used, and more brothers fall in battle. And Phalo, really, I think he should have pulled out earlier and tried to secure this third. Um, which at this point is actually kind of occupied by a queen and an overlord, which is, uh, I don't know what, I don't know what it is with the little one, but he sure does love to bring this overlord-queen combo to the Terran third. This time there, there wasn't a Nidus, however, and so the marines are able to take that little camp down. Uh, back in the upgrades tab, on the production tab, we do have an Ultralisk Cavern. We have several upgrades on the way from the little one, including Adrenal Glands. So we're gonna have Ultra Ling coming here with a couple of Infestors. Ultraling is so strong, and I think Phalo needs to think about maybe going for Sky Terran in the next few minutes. If he does stay on ground, he will need Marauder heavy comps uh, in order to stop the Ultralisks. He is going to try to take out this hatchery, however, but all the Wintermines have got to burrow down. They do burrow down, and a great spread from Phalo, and really mitigating losses there as he, he didn't lose that much at all. And you can see the resources lost here. The little one losing a lot more than Phalo has, and the hatchery for certain is going to go down here. One fungal growth coming out, but the little one is in a ton of trouble as he's lost his hatchery and Phalo able to secure a really big edge in this game. Uh, don't forget, he still needs to secure this, this expansion, which is actually going to go overrun by a couple of cracklings here. Um, and that's, that's the thing. I don't know why Phalo didn't, you know, make a few bunkers here, wall this off with a couple of buildings so that you don't die to these kind of side insurgent attacks. And uh, unfortunately for him, now he realizes that, hey, there is an opening here and he is going to go ahead and secure it, but he loses a few SCVs in the process. And meanwhile, these troops trying to find a position. Actually, they gotta be careful. There is an infester there loaded with energy. It can spit out the fungal growth. And it looks like the fungal does come down. A swarm of cracklings coming through. And this army is berated by banelings, zerglings, you name it. And that army is gonna get crushed. Now, the big threat for Phalo is the Ultralis Sin production back at home from the little one. The final genus of the Zerg evolution is here, and the Ultralisks are, they don't mess around, man. They are here to do damage. And if Phalo doesn't have a heavy Marauder composition, or doesn't have battle cruisers coming pretty soon, he is going to be in a lot of trouble. Widowmines, I, you know, I take it back, after watching game after game, Widowmines really are not that good against Ultras. Ultras are just too beefy. Um, and as you guys can see, the mines just get completely eradicated with the overseers overhead. You know, they, they just don't do that much damage to ultras overall. And Phalo here, realizing that ultras are on the field, has to think about going for very heavy marauders here. Oh, he's packed himself into a corner. He needs to load up and get the hell out of there. And very close call right there. He could have lost a lot more troops than he did. Now gonna ferry his troops back home. We do actually have drilling claws on the way, so Phalo thinking here, well, if I can get some widow mines on the field that can get underground really quickly, maybe I can stop these ultras and the Zerg army. But he's got to fortify this expansion once again, losing a lot of SCVs. 16 have gone down already. Uh, 12 have gone down already, excuse me, and these SCVs gotta get out of the way. Whoa! Those ultras claws were just inches away from hitting the SCVs. I mean, if those SCVs had been just a, a hex forward, the Ultra Splash Damage could have just taken out like 20 or so workers right there. Phalo very, very lucky that those Ultras were not uh, any any closer right there because those Fangs, those, 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 uh, those Claws uh, could have just splashed those SCVs down. Very, very lucky indeed that Phalo didn't, uh, didn't take some civilian fire right there and now I think he's gotten things kind of fortified a little bit. Uh, let's check the upgrades real quick. 3-3 three, three for the for the Zerg. And Phalo just not even close. He's on 2-2, two, two, uh, actually. So yeah, he is close. He's about to finish 3-3 three, three himself. He needs to wait for 3-3 three, three to finish before engaging. And these Ultras coming in once again with Fungal Growth locking down the Marines. But I think Phalo's micro there and the high ground allowing him to hold his ground. And 3-3 three, three just moments away from finishing up. So the Zerg army will not no longer have an advantage over the Terran, but once again, the little one finds a leak, and he runs in with the Zerglings, the Cracklings just doing so much damage, 40 SCVs have gone down already, meanwhile the troops in the background have been, uh, have actually been fungled and surrounded from all sides, from all angles, and the little one crushes this army, and he unfortunately doesn't have enough energy for a fungal, no he does, and he fungles these troops, forcing them to get out of the medevac, and the Ultras are just waiting for, for dinner down below, so, uh, the little one now really starting to take control of this game, and uh, I think Phalo might have just 
Inga overextended a little bit. I, I I don't understand why. You know, as a Terran player, you gotta play that turtle style. You gotta fortify this third base, but never once really until this point in the game has has he been able to fortify this expansion, get a couple bunkers down, leave some troops back at home. Because those zergling, those crackling counterattacks coming out of this northern corridor, uh, they, they've just been the death of him. And now that he's suffered so many worker casualties. I, I don't know if he can actually continue to stay in this game, and the problem, of course, is he's fighting against all these Ultras, and he doesn't have an army equipped to deal with Ultras. He's gonna burrow the mines down, but once again, the SCB line completely obliterated, and here comes the Ultras, and they're gonna run across these mines, but they really don't care, to be honest. And, um, and I think this expansion, once again, yeah, gonna lose all of its workers, and the little one has gotta be happy about that attack, man. Anytime you can trade for Terran SCVs like that, it's a victory. This Ultra is still awaiting orders from the Hive Mine as to what to do. And the Hive Mine now has told it to hold position uh, and take down as many troops as you can. He actually kills off a Hellion at the last second. Meanwhile, though, an insurgent of Cracklings once again coming around the backside. Ooh, devastating. And yet more SCVs going down in the line of fire. Um, and actually, there are some Cracklings inside the main base as well. This is not looking good for Phalo. Uh, and just looking at back at the little one, man, he is he is really just in full-on beast mode. He's got four bases. Uh, you know, he's got he, he doesn't have that much bank surplus, actually, to be to, to, to my surprise. But that doesn't really matter because he's gotten he's gotten so much damage in against Phalo so far in this game. Uh, barring a miracle, I'm not too sure how Fable will be able to recover. Now, this is one of the things Terran players do best is drop meals down at a new location and find a new influx of minerals. And you can see that Fable's actually got a lot of gas here. So maybe if Phalo can just hold on, he's actually going, once again, very aggressive maneuvers here where I think he should be playing more defensively, trying to macro himself back in this game. He goes in for the assault and this time runs into... You know, the Zerg army just ready and waiting. Now, some troops are back here, but they were not focusing the drones, so this attack, once again, is just going to be totally unsuccessful. Uh, and uh, <laughs> the Ultras are coming, the Ultras are coming, and this base actually gets, uh, it's not detected, but I, I don't know what Phalo can do anymore. This has got to be GG. Um, here comes the Zerg Swarm just coming in from all angles. Ooh! Gotta be aware of that Widow Mine friendly fire damage, but not like it matters now. Banely is taking out SCVs. Ultras coming around for the closing kill, and there's one SCV left. Oh, never mind. He's dead. He's dead. And oh, abducting Ultras to the high ground. Very cool. You don't see that every day. That's actually like a campaign maneuver right there. <laughs> Cerebrate, you must abduct your Ultras to the high ground. There are Terran troops above. <laughs> And the little one complies. So there it goes. This has got to be GG now. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and Phalo saying good luck in the finals, which I might or may, may or may not ca uh, cast. I believe he's going to be playing Empire Cast there. Uh, Koss, I should say. Empire Koss, I believe, is how you pronounce it. I do want to take this time to go ahead and say uh, deepest um, excuse me, thoughts and prayers for those of you guys in Boston for the, uh, for the bombings that occurred there. Very, very sad story. Uh, hope you guys are all doing all right on the East Coast. Um, anyways, I will have more videos coming out for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed, and this is HD, and I'm signing out.